After World War II, as democracy matured, the idea of a so-called open imperial family spread rapidly. Speaking of how it was actually opened up, Professor Yagi explained as follows. The term, open imperial family, itself is a term coined by the media. I strongly feel that the, open imperial family, is something that Empress Emerita Machiko has embodied in her youth. In the past, the economist Shinzo Koizumi, who served as the emperor's educator, promoted the democratization of the imperial family during the U.S. occupation period. The marriage of the then crown prince to Machiko was part of this effort, and although the people consider it a love marriage, it is clear that Koizumi was behind the scenes arranging the marriage. Until then, the choice of the princess had been limited to a certain circle of people, but a marriage with a civilian was arranged. This is what Professor Yagi said. When the wedding took place in 1958, the public went enthusiastic about the civilian-born princess, which prompted the spread of television. The so-called Michi boom occurred. Koizumi was trying to bring the imperial family closer to the people by marrying with a civilian, but Yukio Mishima harshly criticized this movement for democratization, calling it a weekly magazine-style emperor system. At a discussion meeting held at Waseda University in 1968, Mishima said, I think that Koizumi did not create a logical relationship between the people and the emperor. This is because, he said, Koizumi did not realize until his death that the idea of connecting with the people by eliminating dignity was wrong. This is how Professor Yagi described it. Another expert on the imperial system. Akira Momochi, a specially appointed professor at Kokushikan University, said as follows. I think that the Michi boom was a major factor in the widespread use of the coined term, open imperial family. This enthusiasm led to a curious interest in learning more about the imperial family. The people welcomed the openness of the imperial family and the media responded by encouraging the imperial family to become more open. At the same time as the Michi boom, Tsukamasa Iri, who had served for a long time as the emperor Showa's chamberlain and chief chamberlain, published a series of books. He wrote, The imperial family must not build a wall between itself and the people as it did before the war. He wrote about the daily life of the Showa emperor insisting that His Majesty should have the opportunity to directly interact with the people. Mr. Eri himself may have written those articles with a sense of mission to break down the walls, but I think this was a line that should not have been crossed. It is also true that the Showa Emperor appeared as if he were a friend, and as a result, it led to a false trend that the imperial family has no privacy. At the time, People often talked about the British royal family as if it were an ideal, but the British royal family had been very open and the subject of gossip even before that. However, the premise of Britain is that it is a class society, and there is a clear understanding that there is a difference between the royal family and the common people. However, in a society like Japan, where all people are considered equal, if the imperial family were to be opened up to the public. There is a risk that some people would mistakenly believe that the imperial family and the general public are the same. This is what Professor Momochi said. Also, Professor Hidehiko Kasahara, Japanese Political History, of Keio University said as follows. Just before and after the Michi boom. Japan was in the process of changing into a mass consumer society due to high economic growth. It was also a time of media diversification, with the spread of television and an increase in the number of magazines in circulation. The so-called middle class grew thicker, and they began to consume media one after another. Under these circumstances, the number of opportunities for the members of the imperial family to be seen by the public increased rapidly. 
and I think this created the impression that the imperial family was becoming more open. With so many people still reeling from the war, it was inevitable that in order for the imperial family to get closer to the people, it was essential to get rid of the image of having been involved in the war. Of course, Emperor Showa, until 1989, did this through his post-war tours around the country and memorial services for the victims. But the Heisei era, 1989-2019, marked the arrival of a completely new era in terms of the birth of an emperor who was not directly involved in the outbreak of war. Many people accepted the fact that the imperial family, which had become a symbol of peace, would be open to the people. This is what Professor Kasahara said. A source at the Imperial Household Agency said that this was due in large part to the wishes of the current Emperor Emeritus himself, who faced Japan's defeat in the war when he was the crown prince. During his reign, then Emperor, the present Emperor Emeritus, had been particularly concerned about the memorialization of the war dead, and he had been carrying out this. Even though he had not been directly involved in the war, he was always been deeply concerned about the war that had been caused in his father's name. The foundation of the liberal mind of then emperor, the present emperor emeritus, was nurtured in his youth. This is what a source at the imperial household agency said. After deepening his reflections on the war, then emperor, the current emperor emeritus, has been promoting the imperial family that walks together with the people. Professor Kasahara said as follows. For the stability of the imperial family, it is essential to maintain an appropriate distance from the people. With the advent of the Heisei era, from 1989, and the increase in the number of generations who do not know about the war, then Emperor and Empress, now Emperor Emeritus and Empress Emerita, have maintained this distance through their welfare and other activities. This is what is known as the Heisei era way. Whenever a natural disaster struck, the couple went to the disaster area to meet the victims and continued to encourage them. The people of Japan have learned ethics and morality from them. The problem on the side of the people, however, is that there are extremely few opportunities to learn about the imperial family in educational courses. Since there are no opportunities to be taught or to think about the significance of the existence of the imperial family and the difference between the imperial family and ordinary people, I feel that more and more people, especially the younger generation, seem to equate the imperial family with celebrities. In the case of Kei Kamuro, there were many comments on news sites to the effect of the royal family living off our blood money. Not so long ago, this would have been unthinkable. This is what Professor Kasahara pointed out. Does it mean that the distance between the imperial family and the people has shrunk to a point where it is no longer appropriate? Professor Kasahara went on to say as follows. Since the 1990s, the so-called middle class has been shrinking, and the society has turned into a society of inequality. Since then, Neoliberalism has further widened the gap. The number of non-regular employees has increased, and a sense of stagnation seems to be spreading throughout society. Many people may have lost not only their economic wealth but also their spiritual wealth. I feel that this atmosphere has led to the idea of blood taxes. With the development of social networking sites and the anonymity that comes with them, we now live in a society where criticism attracts criticism. In the same way that the Showa and Heisei eras created an open imperial family, the modern era, with its desire for sympathy through likes on radical comments, is also inseparable from the imperial family. This is what Professor Kasahara pointed out. as a result of the overopening of the imperial family. His Majesty the Emperor and the members of the imperial family have come to receive a sense of closeness that goes beyond the boundaries of respect from the people. As a side effect of this, 
The number of people who do not know and do not want to know what the imperial family is has increased. Therefore, once the imperial family becomes a target of discomfort and anger, it has become a situation where people mercilessly criticize the imperial family and the imperial family can be easily subjected to hateful comments. K. Kamuro, who did not understand the significance of the imperial family and approached Mako from the perspective of an ordinary person, can also be regarded as a bastard child of the social networking age. It is ironic, and at the same time inevitable, that the so-called Kamuro problem has arisen from the Akishino family, which has avoided the rigid traditions of the imperial family by allowing their children to marry freely, just as ordinary people do, and by denying the traditional Gakushuan school for the imperial education for their children. That's all for now. The information source was published in Shukan Shincho, December 30, 2021 and January 6, 2022 edition. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.